Like, dude, how do you get such amazing grass? Look, look at the height of this stuff. I mean, ryegrass over my head. Oats up to my chest. This is incredible. How do you do this? Well, simple. You just kneel down in the pasture. Of course, if I stand up, still pretty remarkable. Just not quite as. So if you're trying to raise chickens on a pasture like this, um, there's going to be, if you're not spraying it with herbicides and insecticides and all that kind of stuff, there's going to be some grasshoppers. They're going to eat some grass off the pasture. They're going to get some. It's going to be okay. What would be really great is if you could actually have your chickens in pasture like this. <coughs> yeah, boy. He agrees with me. A pasture like this where you've got all kinds of cereal grains, um, rye, wheat, oats, um, and Austrian winter pea, some clover, things that have overwintered and have come up and the chickens are self-harvesting and you don't have to do very much work. You just run them through it, they tromp it down, they eat all the seed heads out, they miss a few, it reseeds the pasture, you get some for next year. If you've got old degraded pasture though, how do you get pasture like this when you're sitting on a pasture that's just not producing much, it's pretty old, pretty worn out, maybe you're just starting to put chickens on it. Well, my experience is the more chickens you can put on, as long as you keep moving them around, the better. When I started out, pretty much the whole pasture looked like this. It was actually worse than this because this is actually a thicker sward than I started out with. And there was no clover in this pasture when I started. There wasn't very much grass. It was almost entirely weeds. What I found was if I can put chickens on this pasture at a high enough density, say 12 hours of 40 chickens in an eight by eight area, then the pasture would actually start changing from that to this, which is just thick and insane. And you can see what's in here is oats, rye, there's wheat, crimson clover, um, there's a number of different cereal grains in here that are growing well. And you can look at how thick the sward is. Pretty obvious. This is much, much thicker. The effect from this is actually meat birds, broilers. I put them on here, Joel Salatin style pens, ran them here for a few months and just kept moving them twice a day. And the effect is just unbelievable. This far out in the pasture, we've never actually had animals over here. No goats, no chickens, no nothing. So you can see it's pretty sparse, it's pretty weedy. There's a lot of jack oaks and things growing up in the pasture. Literally a few feet away, where we have had chickens, and actually where their hutch has been, you have what amounts to a forest of grass. And I'm trying to run the chickens over this when the seeds are um, relatively ready to harvest. And assuming that the chickens will self-harvest a whole bunch of it, what they don't harvest, they're going to tromp, um, hopefully spread some of the seed around, help the pasture reseed itself, and obviously their manure will help um, help the next thing that is going to grow in its place. But what they don't tromp, or what they what they don't harvest, when they tromp down, it's not a bad thing because you can see the mulch that's created. by just the tromping action. And for here, this is actually a path where we walk to the house and back to, from the chickens. And you can see how thick the growth is here and then how thick the, the layer of um, mulch effectively is. And if you're familiar with Gabe Brown 
and some of, of what he talks about with keeping armor on the soil surface, this is that same kind of thing. You, even if the chickens didn't harvest any of it and it all got completely tromped down and destroyed or, or had mow, the neighbor come and mow it all down, it's still putting a ton of biomass on the soil. It's putting a lot of carbon on the top of the soil that'll feed the, the microbiology. It's gonna feed the, the earthworms. It's gonna protect the soil when it rains from um, the, the dirt sort of splashing up and washing away in a heavy rain. It's gonna keep the soil surface cooler in the hot summer. It's gonna keep the moisture in. Um, it's, there's so many good effects that this sort of natural mulch or this kind of cover crop is gonna do for your pasture, whether or not you have an animal eat it, which is my difficulty right now with not having an herbivore on the pasture to eat this stuff. I just look at it, I'm like, this is so much great biomass, I'd love to run an animal over this, but if you don't have an animal or you can't commit to an animal yet, you can still grow this stuff and then mow it down, trump it down, crimp it down, whatever you need to do. And that, just that action itself is gonna help create a lot of good ecology on your pasture. So whatever the chickens aren't gonna eat, that can just go down on the soil surface. That's totally fine. So was I just super fortunate enough to have all these oats and clover and all that kind of stuff growing in my field and when I just ran chickens over it, it just sprouted and I don't know where it came from. Nope. What actually happened was when we first moved here and I saw how bad the pasture was, I thought I'm just going to seed this whole thing with all kinds of oats and clover and, and wheat and turnip greens and all kinds of stuff and then it's going to be a totally different pasture and that was three almost four years ago and i seeded the whole pasture and nothing came up like literally nothing i think maybe i had a few turnips come up and then you know make a turnip sprout about that far into the ground because our pasture is so dense i mean it's rock hard uh red clay underneath um you can see i'm in a section of the pasture um, right next to the woods where we haven't put any animals, but I'm like, you can look down here. It's, I mean, this stuff is just hard. It's sparse. This is not great pasture. But I planned all that stuff out and waited for cool weather to happen. And in South Carolina, where I am, you can plant right on, you can throw seed out right on the top of the soil and there's enough moisture. Stuff will just germinate automatically. Well, nothing germinated and we had plenty of rain and I thought, what in the world's going on? Did I just waste like $400 worth of seed to seed these several acres? So then I started running broilers in small pens across the pasture just as an experiment. I ran uh, maybe, I guess it was about 15 the first time in just this little tiny pen. And behind them, a couple months later was just just this trail you could just see exactly where the chickens had been through in the pasture and it was it sprouted up with all the things that i had planted and that was my answer like the the problem was not the seed the problem was not the weather the problem was not any of that the problem was that there's something in the ecology of the existing soil that is not going to allow this stuff to germinate and the action of having chickens with laying down tons of manure on the soil surface was the ecological change that needed to happen or in order to germinate all of this stuff. So could you, without buying any wheat, any clover, any of that sort of thing, revitalize a pasture, just moving chickens around that pasture and bring back all the grass, bring back all the latent seed that's in the soil bank? I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. For us, it was a matter of we'd really like to try to grow a lot of the grain that our chickens are wanting to eat that helps them create a lot of eggs, that makes that rooster crow during every video that I make. There it is. There's the other rooster that crows during every video I make. He has crow envy. So if you want to try revitalizing a pasture using chickens and not plant anything, 
just try it. Just go for it. See if it works. If you want to try growing your own grain that your chickens will self-harvest to help cut your feed bill, you'll probably have to invest in some seed at the beginning. One other strategy to consider in this is if you're throwing out scratch grains for your chickens, try to avoid corn. Corn normally is not that digestible unless it's crushed, and if you get crushed corn in your scratch grains, it's not viable seed. So shoot for non-GMO scratch grains that are whole seeds that you wouldn't mind reseeding the pasture with, you know, barley and wheat and oats and millet and sorghum and all that sort of good stuff. You're throwing that out for your chickens, you're going to start seeing it coming up in the pasture and that's kind of a, a cheap reseeding possibility. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel. That helps me make more videos just like this one. And remember, whatever you're doing on the homestead, whatever you're doing on your farm, just try something, just try something.